Hello and welcome back. Today we'll start with the next topic of our syllabus that is nephilometry and trabidometry. The learning outcomes. The learners will be able to explain principle of nephilometry and turbidometry, discuss the instrumentation and describe the applications of nephilometry and turbidometry. One thing which we are normally observing that is our sky is blue at daytime and at the sunset or sunrise the sky has certain dark color like this. So why this is so? The question is in your mind. The answer, the blue color of the sky and the red color of the sun at sunset results from scattering of light by small dust particle, water molecule and other gases in the atmosphere. The sky is blue because violet and blue light are scattered to a greater extent than the other longer wavelengths. The efficiency with which light is scattered depends upon wavelength. Some few terminologies you should know that is Tendal effect. What do you mean by Tendal effect? So Tendal effect is scattering of light by particles in collides or suspension. The longer the wavelength light is more transmitted while if the wavelength is shorter the light is more reflected via scattering one more term is important that is reliance scattering it is scattering of light by particles in a medium without changing in wavelength in that intensity of scattered light is inversely proportional the fourth power of the wavelength. So, the again answer to the why sky blue uh, looks blue is blue light is scattered much more stronger than the red light. In nephilometry turbidometry, when electromagnetic radiation or we call it as light because in the visible region strikes on a particles in a solution some of light will be absorbed by the particle, some will be transmitted to the solution and some of the light will be scattered or reflected. The amount of light scattered is proportional to the concentration of insoluble particles. So, we can use this technique for quantitative estimation. Scattered light may be measured by turbidometry and nephilometry. Turbidometric measurements are made at 180 degree from the incident beam of the radiation that is source while in nephilometry the incident intensity of the scattered light is measured usually but not necessarily at a right angle to the incident light beam. So when we are comparing nephilometry and turbidometry few points we should remember definition. Nephilometry is a measurement of light scattered by suspended particle whereas turbidometry is measurement of transmittance of radiation beam incidence on a particular suspended material in a medium. So in case of the type of light measured in nephilometry we are measuring scattered light and in turbidometry we are measuring transmitted light. Again the most important difference that is the angle of measurement. The measurement usually being made perpendicular to the incident beam that is 90 degree in nephilometry whereas the measurements are made 180 degree from the incident light in the turbidometry on the same angle. So type of instruments for nephilometric measurements we require specially designed nephilometers while turbidometry can be done in your simple colorometers or spectrophotometers which are available in your laboratory. What is the basic principle and theory behind nephilometry and turbidometry? The principle of nephilometry and turbidometry is based on scattering or absorption of light by solid or colloidal particle suspended in the solution. 
when light is passed through the suspension part of incident radiation energy is dispatched by absorption reflection and refraction that is decrease radiant energy is consumed decrease due to the absorption reflection and refraction while remaining is transmitted measurement of the intensity of transmitted light is a function of concentration of dispersed space and this become the basis for the turbidometric analysis when we are studying with a factor affecting on scattering of light the first important factor is the concentration of particle like your diels lambert's law highly uh, concentrated solution may produce the different uh, scattering of the radiation same principle will be applicable here particle size what is the particle size if your suspension is colloidal suspension or it is agglomeration of the particles that will also decides how much scattered light will be there wavelength of radiations which are using for determination that will also decides then distance of observation okay at what angle and how much distance is there from source to the detector that is to be measured then molecular weight of the particle that will definitely affect then temperature or viscosity they are interrelated as the temperature increases viscosity will decrease and that will definitely change in the measurement criteria and refractive index due to the presence of higher concentrated particles in the solution the refractive index will change and that will uh, change that will result in the change in observations so these are all factors which are affecting measurements while you are doing the measurement of scattered light the function of light scattered at angle depends upon size and shape of particles the amount of scattering yes that is directly proportional to the square of effective radius of the particles the control of particle size and shape sample solutions and standard must be prepared under the identical conditions in the same laboratory with the same uh, chemicals we should prepare the standard and samples we cannot use the book values for comparison purpose following care must be taken that concentration of two ions forming the precipitate should be properly controlled the ratio of concentration of solution is again maintained properly the most important is the order of mixing of the precipitate so whatever procedure given you for preparation of the precipitate you have to follow the same procedure then temperature at which the suspension is prepared this will affect the particle size and definitely it will affect the measurements the second parameters that is wavelength the intensity of scatter radiations depend upon the wavelength of incident light shorter the wavelength are scattered to the greater extent then the longer ones wavelength of light is chosen in such a way that an light solution does not absorb strongly turbidometric and nephelometric measurements are carried out using generally the white light so the molecular weight that is the another parameter it has a direct relationship with the scattered radiation then distance of observation light scattering decreases by distance r2 from the light scattering particles to the detector so we should know exactly what is the distance from the uh, source and the detector when we will see the instrumentation the, uh, we can see the two types of instruments are there turbidometry and nephelometry only the difference is in the position of your detector in case of the turbidometry it is at 180 means in the same path light source then your sample and detector is placed where in the case of nephelometry the light source and the detectors are right angled to each other because we are measuring the scattered light the component the instrument called as a turbidometer and nephelometer the basic components of instruments are radiation source sample cell detector and readout units to the radiation sources ordinary 
Tungsten filament lamp, what we have studied in the previous lectures, can be used, or we can also go up to the mercury or a clamp for a source of the radiation. The second one is your sample cell, interferometer and nephilometer. The cell made from glass or plastic because we are using generally the visible light, so they are transmitted to the glass or plastic can be used. So we can have a rectangular cells and we can also have certain cells which are cylindrical in shape. Rectangle cells are used in turbinometry and semi-octagonal uh, sample cells are used in nephilometry. Semi-octagonal means it has certain side because we are measuring in the radiation from different angles. Either we can measure from 90, 45, 60. So we can have the octagonal shape also for nephilometric measurements. The detector. The photo cells can be used as a detector in case of the nephilometry and turbidometry. Now we will see the applications. It is used in analysis of water clarity, whereas concentration of ions in the water. It can be used for determination of carbon dioxide due to the formation of the uh, turbidity. It can be used for determination of inorganic substances, that is sulfate, for determination of sulfate. And practically, we are doing by using the barium chloride, ammonia, uh, so that will produce a particular suspension. Okay, so we call it as an Nessler reagent. So it can be also used for determination of phosphorus, trichinine, molybdates, etc. It is also used in biochemical analysis for the various protein uh, molecular weight determinations. Also, it is used. Then quantitative analysis that is uh, up to the ppm uh, levels we can do by using this nephilometry and turbidometry. In uh, water treatment plants or in the sewage work, in the refineries or paper in industries, uh, it is commonly utilized. In um, atmospheric environmental control, that is pollution control for detecting various smokes and pokes, we can use the nephilometers and turbidometers. NT units. NTU, nephilometric, turbinometric units are the units which are used for measurements of the smoke uh, particles. Determination of molecular weight, many polymers molecular weight can be determined by using this nephilometric and turbinometric determinations. Higher molecular weight substances, molecular weight determination is very easily done by using nephilometric turbinometry, where the standard NTU suspensions are prepared and the intensity of your sample is measured, which is plotted against the calibration graph. It is also used in the phase titration, nephilometric, turbinometric titrations are available for determinations. So it is a very small topic which we have covered here. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this topic. Happy learning. See you in the next lecture.